Hello each and everyone the one who is watching my video this is Ankita your commerce educator welcoming you to global online where we are taking classes for net and set exam preparation in today's lecture i'm going to discuss 50 most important mcq on legal aspect of business unit ye lecture dekhne ke baad aapke jo sare doubt hai related to legal aspect of business unit wo sare ke sare clear ho jayenge aur aapko ye bhi pata chal jayega ki exam mein kis tarah ke question puche jate hain तो ये लेक्चर देखने के बाद आपके जो सारे डाउट है ये क्लियर हुए या नहीं ये देखने के लिए हम आपके लिए लेकर आए हैं फ्री इवेल्यूशन टेस्ट ये टेस्ट देने के लिए आपको हमारा जो ऐप है ग्लोबल ऑनलाइन वो अपने प्ले स्टोर से डाउनलोड करना पड़ेगा जहां पर आपको ये लोगो दिखेगा डाउनलोड करने के बाद आपको उसके स्टोर में जाना है और अपना जो पेपर है यूजीसी नेट कॉमर्स पेपर टू वो सिलेक्ट करना है सिलेक्ट करने के बाद उसके कंटेंट में जाना है और कंटेंट में जाने के बाद आपको जो टेस्ट है वो मिल जाएगा ये जो टेस्ट है वो सभी स्टूडेंट के लिए फ्री है ओके और एक एक और एक इम्पोर्टेंट बात ग्लोबल ऑनलाइन आपके लिए लेकर आया है कॉमर्स पेपर टू कोर्स जहां पर आपको मिलेंगे कंप्लीट वीडियो लेक्चर मोर देन हंड्रेड वीडियो लेक्चर्स वी आर प्रोवाइडिंग यू नोट्स वो भी डिटेल एक्सप्लेनेशन के साथ टेस्ट सीरीज विद द डिटेल एक्सप्लेनेशन प्रीवियस ईयर पीडीएफ विद द डिटेल एक्सप्लेनेशन द ड्यूरेशन ऑफ द कोर्स इज वन ईयर और इसकी जो फी है वो इंक्रीज हो गई है और वो अब है सेवन थाउजेंड अगर आप ये कोर्स लेते हैं तो पेपर वन का जो कोर्स है वो आपको हम फ्री में प्रोवाइड कर रहे हैं डोंट वेट फॉर द लास्ट मोमेंट डू ज्वाइन अवर कोर्स एंड क्लियर योर अपकमिंग एग्जाम and the agreement is not enforceable by a law it is said to be in a given question they ask you and the agreement which is not enforceable by a law it is said to be for this the options given are void a void agreement as a no legal effect and the agreement which does not satisfy the essential element of a contract is called a void then is voidable Voidable is a term typically used with the respect to the contract that is valid and binding unless the voidable or a declare the void by a party to the contract who is legitimately exercising the power to avoid a contractual obligation third option is valid valid contract is well grounded as a valid objection producing the desired result valid matter having a legal force and last option is enforceable or do illegal and an enforceable contract or a transaction is a one that is a valid but one the court will not enforce enforceable is usually used in the contradiction to the void and a voidable the correct answer for this question will be option number a an agreement not enforceable by a law it is said to be void okay and the agreement is a voidable contract when it is in a given question they ask you the agreement is a said to be a voidable contract when it is now first of all understand what is agreement agreement is like a contract between two or a more party where they agree to to do something for this the first option is enforceable if a certain condition are fulfilled second option is enforceable by a law at the option of aggrieved party third option is enforceable by both the party and the last option is not enforceable at all for this the correct answer will be option number b an agreement is a voidable contract when it is enforceable by a law at the option of aggrieved party next question here is consideration in this question they ask you about a consideration if you look at the definition of a consideration according to the section 2 clause d of the indian contract act 1872 it is a explicit explicitity stated the promisee or any other person this essentially means that in a india consideration may move from the promise to any other person for this the first option given is must be moved from the promisee 
Here the promise is a person whom the promise has been made. Second option is may move from the promise or a any other person. Third option is may move from the third party. Third party is the person who is primarily involved in the situation except the two party who are actually there. And the last option is may move from the promiser. Promiser is a person who make the promise. The correct answer here is option number B. Consideration may move from the promise or any other person. The contractual capacity of the company is regulated by in a given question they ask you the contractual capacity of company is regulated by which of the following and for this the first option is it's a memorandum of association and a provision of company act 1956. The memorandum of association is the document of a great importance in relation to the proposed company. It contains the fundamental condition upon which alone the company is allowed to incorporate. It is a character of a company and it defines the company's reason for the existence. Second option is the term of a contract entered into with the third party. Third party contract are a agreement that involve a person who isn't a party to a contract but it involve with the transaction this person may be buyer representing one of the party about a third party contract think of a third party as a individual who isn't directly involved in the transaction but may be affected by it okay third option here is it's a article of association Now the article of association is the document which prescribe the rules and bylaws from the general management of the company and for the attainment of its object as given in the memorandum it is a document of a significance in the life of a company as it contain the regulation for the international administration of the company's affair and the last option is its prospectus Prospectus is a issue by a public company for offering its a security to the public. It is a legal document containing the information as a prescribed by the Security and Exchange Board of India and issued at the provision mentioned in the section 26 of a Company Act 2013. The contractual capacity of a company registered under Companies Act 1956 is regulated by memorandum of association provision of companies act both clause 1 and clause 2 that means the answer for this question will be option number a it's a memorandum of association and the provision of company act 1956 the next question here is the collateral transaction to an illegal agreement r and the options given are void a void agreement has no legal effect and an agreement which does not satisfy the essential element of a contract is a void then is illegal third option is voidable a contract voidable is a term typically used with respect to the contract that is a valid and binding unless the avoidable or a declare avoid by the party to the contract who is a legitimately exercising the power to avoid a contractual obligation and the last option is not affected at all collateral agreement refer to the transaction associated or a incidental to the main agreement the law strictly prohibited such a agreement hence entering into the illegal agreement is called a punishable offense in the eyes of law that means the answer for this question will be option number b that is illegal the next question here is section 128 of a indian contract act 1872 provide in a given question they ask you indian contract act 1872 under which one section is there that is section 128 which provide and for this the options given are security liability security liability means the liability of the security as 
coextensive with that of the principal debtor unless it is otherwise provided by contract second option is continuing guarantee the guarantee which extended to the series of a transaction is called continuing guarantee and it is under section 129 please remember this third option is revocation of continuing guarantee continuing guarantee can be revoked by a notice by a debt of a security and by variance in the term of contract between the debtor and the creditor Section 129 of Indian Contract Act 1872 defines the continuing guarantee as a guarantee which extends to the series of a transaction is called a continuing guarantee. Continuing guarantee under 129. Please remember this. Don't forget this because you may receive question on this. And the last option is consideration for guarantee. Consideration in a contract of a guarantee. anything done or any promise made for the benefit of a principal debtor may be sufficient consideration to the security for giving the guarantee in other words something done or any promise made for the benefit of a principal debtor is a presumed by a law to be sufficient consideration in the contract of the guarantee the answer here for this question is option number a Section 128 of Indian Contract Act 1872 provides securities liability. The next question here is the sale of a good act was enacted on. Here they ask you about the sale of good act. The sale of a good act 1930 was law enacted in the conical pre-independence India for the benefit of merchant in India. the act related to the contract for the sale of a good for all the state of a india except for a jammu kashmir the contract of a sale include the agreement on the part of a buyer as well as that of the seller for this the options given are 15 february 1930 second option is 1 july 1930 third option is 15 april 1930 and last option is none of the above The correct answer here is option number B. The sale of a good act was enacted on 1st July 1930. The next question here is controller of certifying authority that is CCA work under in a given question they ask you the CCA work under and for this the options given are prime minister office second option is reserve bank of india that is RBI RBI is india central bank and regulated body and responsible for the issue and the supply of indian rupee and the regulation of indian banking system it manages the country's main payment system and work to promote is the economic development third option is ministry of communication and it ministry of communication is a union ministerial agency under the government of india responsible for telecommunication and the postal services it is a co out of a ministry of communication and the information technology on 19 july 2016 and last option is autonomous body autonomous body is a set by the government for the specific purpose it is a independent in the day to day functioning but the government has a some control over the autonomous body the answer here for this question is option number c that is ministry of communication and it a promise is in a given question they ask you who is promise and for this the options given are the person who make the promise the person who make the promise is called a promiser and not the promise okay second option is a person who monitor the statement of intention of two parties third option is the person to whom the promise is made and the last option is none of the above a promise is the commitment by someone to do or not to do something as a known promise means declaration assuring that one will or will not do something as a verb it means to commit oneself by promise to do or a give it can also means the capacity of good similar to the value that is realized in the near future okay in promise there are two person the person 
who make the promise and person to whom the promise is made okay that means the promiser and a promisee the person who make the promise is called a promiser and a person to whom the promise is made is the promisee that means the answer for this question is option number c the next question here is an official liquidator is appointed by in a given question they ask you who appoint the official liquidator for this the first option is manager second option is a court of competent jurisdiction competence and jurisdiction in the law the authority of the court to deal with the specific matter competence refer to the legal ability of the court to extract the jurisdiction over the person or a thing that is a subject to the suit okay and a jurisdiction that which is a competent court may exact at the power to hear and determine the suit in the court third option is the board of a director board of a director is the executive committee that jointly supervise the activity of an organization which can be either for a profit or a non profit organization such as a business non profit organization or the government agency and last option is central government official liquidator is the officer appointed by the central government under section 448 please remember this okay of the companies act 1956 and other attached to the various high court the official liquidator are under the administration charges of the respective regional director who supervise their functioning on behalf of the central government that means the answer here for this question will be option number d that is central government which of the following does not come under definition information under rti act 2005 in a given question they ask you given which does not come under the definition of information under rti act 2005 for this the options given are log books second option is circulars third option is file noting in the process and the last option is data material held in any electronic form in the right to the information act that is rti act 2005 information means any material in a form of including records document memos email opinion advice press release circular order log books contract report paper sample model data material held in any electronic form and the information relating to any private body which can be accessed by the public authority under any other law for the time being in a force so this is the information about the rti act 2005 as per the explanation the log books circular and data material held in any electronic form will come under information under the rti act 2005 but the file noting in the process will be not included in the definition of information under the rti act 2005 that means the correct answer will be option number c which of the following is not an implied condition in the contract of the sale in a given question they ask you given which is not a implied condition in the contract of the sale here to answer this question you have to first understand what is a contract of the sale here the contract of a sale is an agreement between the seller and a buyer a seller agree to deliver or sell something to the buyer for the set price that the buyer has agreed to pay with this contract the transfer of the ownership happen when the buyer pay and a seller deliver for this the first option is condition as to quality or a fitness second option is condition as to merchantable quality third option is condition as to wholesomeness and last option is condition as to free from encumbrance so for this question option d will be the correct answer condition as to free from encumbrance is not in a implied condition in the contract of sale next question here is in a order that an agreement may be regarded as a contract it is necessary to provide raise to the legal obligation 
विच ऑफ द फॉलोइंग अग्रीमेंट डू नॉट क्रिएट एनी लीगल ऑब्लिगेशन ओके सो हियर इन दिस दे गिवन यू वन स्टेटमेंट एंड आक्स यू गिवन विच इज नॉट अ अग्रीमेंट विच इज क्रिएट एनी लीगल ऑब्लिगेशन एंड फॉर दिस द ऑप्शन गिवन आर सोशल अग्रीमेंट अ सोशल अग्रीमेंट आर अ मेड बिटवीन द फ्रेंड आर एन आर अ मेड विदाउट एन अ इंटेंशन ऑफ बींग एनफोर्सेबल वेर द कॉन्ट्रैक्ट इज ऑफ अ सोशल नेचर द लॉ इज अज्यूम दैट बोथ द पार्टीज डिड नॉट इंटेंड द अग्रीमेंट लीगली बाइंडिंग देन इज मोरल अग्रीमेंट मोरल अग्रीमेंट एंड अ प्रोमिस आर अ वेरी इफेक्टिव वे टू लेट मोटिव अदर पीपल इन टू फॉर्मिंग द टास्क विदाउट डूइंग एनीथिंग इन द रिटर्न देन इज रिलीजियस अग्रीमेंट एंड लास्ट ऑप्शन इज ऑल ऑफ दी अबाउ एंड अ ऑब्लिगेशन और अ ड्यूटी विच इज नॉट एनफोर्सेबल थ्रू द लॉ इट इज नॉट अ रिगार्डेड एज अ कॉन्ट्रैक्ट सोशल मोरल और अ रिलीजियस अग्रीमेंट डू नॉट मेक अ एनी लीगल ऑब्लिगेशन फॉर अ इंस्टेंट an agreement to take a loan jointly or to go the picnic is not a contract because it does not make a duty enforceable through the law such a agreement are a purely social nature where there is no intention to make a legal connection hence they do not result into the contract that means the answer for this question will be option number d that is all of the above In this question two statement are given first one is assertion and second one is reason what assertion say is a void contract should be distinct from a void agreement okay and for that the reason is a void contract is a void up in issue okay and for this the options given are both a and r are true and r is the correct explanation of the a second option is both a and r are true but r is not a correct explanation of a third option is a is true but r is false and last option is a is false but r is true in case of a void agreement no contract come into the subsistence such an agreement confer no right on any person and make a no obligation it is a void up initio that is from the very beginning for a instant an agreement with a minor is a void because a minor is a incompetent to the contract a void contract on the other hand was a valid when it was a enter into but subsequently because of a one cause or a other become a void a void may become a void due to the impossibility of the performance change of a law or some other reason The answer here for this question will be option number C. A is the true but R is false. The next question here is in case of a absence of a constant in the contract the contract is in a given question they ask you in case the absence of a constant a contract is the options given are valid second option is voidable third option is void and last option is illegal in case the constant is not a free the contract is a voidable at the option of the party those constant was not free but in case there is a complete absence of a constant the agreement is void up in issue that is it is not enforceable at the option of either party that means the answer here will be option number c in case of absence of a constant in the contract the contract is void the next question here is where one of the party to the contract is padanishi woman the contract is presumed to be induced by for this the options given are caution caution is a complying a party to act in an involuntary manner by a use of threat including force second option is undo influence undo influence is a psychological process by which a person free will be supplanted by that the another it is a legal term and a strict definition varies by the jurisdiction then is fraud fraud can be committed through and across the many media including the mail wire phone or a internet and last option is misrepresentation 
in common law jurisdiction the misrepresentation is an untrue or a misleading statement of the fact made during the negotiation by a one party to the another the statement that inducing that other party to enter into the contract so before i tell you the answer do you know the meaning of pardanishi woman so here the pardanishi means hidden behind a veil or a screen it refer to the woman who practice the seclusion the ground on which the doctrine is established is that such a woman are less conscious and can be easily influenced with a very little external manifestation okay this rule is not limited to only to the well woman but it is also extended to those women who are not technically pardanishin but are a illiterate or a old or a sick the principle on which the protection by a law is a accorded to the pardanishi woman is based on the equity and a good consequence so here the correct answer for this question will be option number b that is undue influence the next question here is when an agreement or a contract become a void a person who has received any benefit or a advantage under such a agreement or a contract necessity restore it or a compensate for it to the person from whom he receive it okay this term as and the options given are novation here the novation means the substitution of a new contract in a place of old one second option is restitution restitution means return or a restoration when a contract or a contract become a void a person who has received any benefit or a advantage under such a agreement or a contract necessarily restore it or a compensate for it to the person from whom he received it third option is rescission here the rescission is equitable remedy which allow a contractual party to cancel the contract party may reset if they are victim of waiting factor such as a misrepresentation mistake or a under influence and the last option is caution caution is a complying a party to the act in an involuntary manner by a use of threat including the force here the correct answer will be option number b that is restitution next question here is what damages are avoided in case of a breach of a contract where there is only technological violation of a legal right but no substantial loss is a cause thereby for this the options given are first option is exemplary now what is exemplary exemplary are the plan to illustrate the court strong disapproval of the conduct of the defended in committing the wrong they are not proportionate to the actual precautionary loss substantiated through the aggrieved party but are inflicted through the method of the punishment these are normally awarded in case of breach of a promise to the marry or wrongful dishonor of a check through the banker the measure of a damage in case of a breach of a promise to marry is a dependent upon the of the stock to the sentiment and the goodwill of the promise second option is nominal nominal damages are awarded in case of a breach of a contract where there is only technical violation of a legal right but no substantial loss is called cost thereby the damages granted in such a cases are described the nominal because they are very little say a rupee third option is ordinary and last option is special as per the explanation you might understand what is the correct answer for this the correct answer will be option number b that is nominal the next question here is a delivery of keys of godown where the goods are a lying or a transferring the base of a lending or a railway receipt to the buyer amount to and the options given are actual delivery now what is actual delivery 
एक्चुअल डिलीवरी रिफर टू द सरेंडर ऑफ अ कंट्रोल और अ पॉजेशन ऑफ अ प्रॉपर्टी बाय द वेंडर एंड अ अजम्पन ऑफ अ पॉजेशन बाय अ वेंडी सेकेंड ऑप्शन इज कंस्ट्रक्टिव डिलीवरी वेन अ पर्सन हु इज इन अ पॉजेशन ऑफ अ गुड्स एक्नोलॉजीज टू द होल्ड द गुड ऑन द बिहाफ ऑफ द बायो इज अमाउंट टू द कंस्ट्रक्टिव डिलीवरी थर्ड ऑप्शन इज सिम्बॉलिक डिलीवरी इन केस वेर द गुड्स आर अ बल्की एंड अ हैवी एंड इट इज नॉट पॉसिबल टू फिजिकल हैंड एम इन अ एक्सेस टू द बायो सम सिम्बॉल विच कैरीज विथ द रियल पॉजिशन और मैनेज इन द एक्सेस ऑफ अ गुड इज अ हैंडेड इन अ एक्सेस टू द बायर For a instant, a delivery of a key to the godown where the goods are lying, or a transferring the bills of a lady, or a railway receipt to the buyer, amount to the symbolic delivery of the good. And the last option is none of the above. The correct answer here is option number C, that is symbolic delivery. Next question here is section eight of the Companies Act 2013 deal with. Here they are asking you about a section 8 under the Companies Act 2013 for which the first option is government companies government companies is a company in which a government or a state government hold up 51% or a more of a paid up capital second option is dormant cap companies dormant company is a excellent opportunity to start a company for a future project or hold an asset intellectual property without having significant accounting transaction third option is charitable company charitable company means a company form and register under the company act 2006 or one which a provision of the act apply and which is a essential for the charitable purpose and last option is nidhi company Section 8 of the Company Act 2013 deal with the formation of a company which are a form to promote a charitable object of the commerce arts science sport education research social welfare religion charity protection of a environment etc such a company intended to apply its profit in promoting its object and prohibiting the payment of any dividend to its member So the answer here for this question will be option number C that is charitable companies The breach of contract may be in a given question they ask you about the breach of a contract So here a breach of a contract is a legal cause of action and the type of a civil wrong in which binding agreement exchange is not honored by one or a more party to the contract by non performance or a interference with the other party performance for this the first option is actual actual means which is existing in effect or a reality the actual events second option is anticipatory anticipatory as to do with the realizing something beforehand or a anticipating for example now we are preparing for ugc net exam correct so here we can anticipate the date when can be the exam when can be the notification come right that is called a anticipatory third option is none of the above and last option is either of the above a breach of a contract may be actual or may be anticipatory that means the answer here will be option number d that is either of the above section which of indian contract act 1872 defined proposal in this question they ask you from indian contract act 1872 which section define the proposal for which the options given are 2 clause a second option is 2 clause b third option is 2 clause d and last option is 2 clause e now If you want to know about the Indian Contract Act 1872 it is a prescribed law relating to the contract in a India and it is a key act regulating the Indian Contract Act this is the meaning of Indian Contract Act 1872 please remember this the Indian Contract Act 1872 proposal is defined in a section 2 clause a as when a one person will signify to another person 
this willingness to do or not do something with a view to obtain the absence of a such a person as a act or a absence he is a said to be a proposal or an offer future of valid offer the correct answer here for this question will be option number a that is section 2 clause a of a indian contract act 1872 define the proposal but section 2 clause b is for the acceptance okay section 2 clause d is for the consideration and section 2 clause e is for the agreement please remember this the next question here is section 2 clause j of a indian contract act 1872 define just now i explain you the indian contract act 1872 right so here the first option is valid contract valid contract is an agreement which is a binding and enforceable by a law the parties are legally bound to perform the contract second option here is void contract void contract is a contract is an agreement enforceable by a law a void agreement is one which is not enforced by a law sometime an agreement which is enforceable by a law that is a contract can become a void third option here is voidable contract voidable contract unlike a void contract is a valid contract which may be either rejected at the option of a one of the party at most one party to the contract is bound third and the last option is quasi contract quasi contract is a financial contract recognized by the court the notion of quasi contract can be traced to roman law and still a concept used in some of the modern legal system so these are the meaning of the options please remember the options because you may receive the question on this the answer here for this question will be option number b section 2 clause j of a indian contract act 1872 define void contract in a indian contract act 1872 2 clause j a contract which ceases to be a enforceable by a law become a void when it ceases to the enforceable the next question is the person to whom the proposal is made is called and for this the options given are offerer the person who make the proposal or a offer is called a offerer second option is offeree who is a offeree the person on whom the proposal is made is called a offeree third option is proposer proposer is a person who make the propose proposal okay and the last option is promiser who is the promiser the promiser the person who make the promise is called a promiser okay Here the answer for this question will be option number B. The person to whom the proposal is made is called a offeree. The next question here is contingent contract is a defined in a section which of a Indian Contract Act. In a given question, they ask you about the contingent contract act. Okay. So for this, the options given are first option is th section thirty. second option is section 31 third option is section 32 and last option is section 34 under section 31 of a indian contract act 1872 contingent contract are defined as follow if a two or a more party enter into the contract to do or do not do something if an event which is a collateral to the contract does or does not happen then it is a contingent contract that means the answer here for this question will be option number b that is contingent contract is a defined in a section 31 of indian contract act 1872 pledge is a specific kind of in a given question they ask you about the pledge for this the first option is bailment bailment is a legal relationship 
in a common law where the owner transfer the physical possession of a personal property for a time but retain ownership the owner who surrender custody to the property is called a bailor and the individual who accept the property is called a bailee then its rule any rules or a regulation or a principle which is made by the law third is business business is an organization or a entity that sell the goods and the services to make a profit it's called a business and last option is product the goods which the business sell or a businessman sell to make a profit that is a product okay bailment of a good as a security against the debt for a performance of the obligation or the payment thereon is known as a pledge the bailee under the contract of a pledge does not become the owner but as having a possession and a right to possess he is said to have a special property that means the answer here is option number a pledge is a special kind of bailment the next question here is a proposal when accepted becomes what and the agreement enforceable by a law is in a given question they ask you when the proposal is accepted what we call it and the agreement enforceable by a law is for this the options given are first option is agreement acceptance Here the agreement is a meeting of a mind or a mutual understanding between the two or more person about their reciprocal right and duty regarding the past and the future performance. Often the term agreement is a frequently used for a contract. Acceptance means the when the proposal is accepted by a other person that is called a acceptance. Second option here is promise and a contract here the promise the proposal when accepted become the promise offer is an open invitation by the promiser to the for the acceptance of the term and a condition for a undertaking which when accepted by the promise become a binding on both the party that the proposal become the promise contract means a contract is a legal enforceable agreement that create a defines and govern a mutual right and the obligation among the party third option is contract promise and last option is acceptance consideration now what is consideration a vital element in the law of a contract consideration is a benefit which must be bargained for between the parties and is a essential reason for a party entering into the contract so this is the meaning of given option the answer here for this question is option number b a proposal when accepted become a promise and the agreement enforceable by a law is a contract the next question here is an agreement which prevent a person from carrying a lawful business is what under of a, under which of the indian contract act 1872 So here the first option is void and section 27. Now you know the meaning of a void. Void means which is not enforceable by the law. Here the section 27 of a Indian Contract Act 1872 provide an agreement by a virtue of which a person is a restrained from carrying out the lawful trade and the profession is a void to extend the restraint. second option is voidable section 28 you know the meaning of the voidable whether one person is not born okay section 28 or a clause 28 was a legislative designation for a series of a law across the britain that prohibited the promotion of homosexuality by a local authority third option is legal section 20 illegal section 26 illegal means which is not legal by the government okay section 26 of a indian contract act provided every agreement is a restraint for a marriage of any person other than the minor is a void 
thereby a reinforce a person's right to enjoy the freedom of a marriage by delegitimizing the agreement which impact that the granted freedom and last option is valid section 10 valid which is a enforceable by a law section 10 refer to the crimes act 1999 the section 10 allow the court to find out the guilty of an offense but to discharge a matter without recording to the this means that you will not receive a criminal record of that offense here the answer for this question will be option number a that is an agreement which prevent a person from carrying a lawful business is a void under the section 27 of indian contract act 1872 which of the following strike only at the document and not the transaction for this the options given are the transfer of a property act 1882 second option is the registration act 1908 third option is both a and b and last option is none of the above the transfer of property act 1870 1882 is an indian registration which regulates the transfer of a property in india it contains a specific provision regarding what constitute a transfer and the condition attached to it it came into the force on 1st july 1882 okay 1st july remember this and second one is the registration act 1908 registration act 1908 is an act consolidated and enactment relating to the registration of the document whereas it is a expanded to the consolidated the enactment relating to the registration of the document it is a hereby enacted as a follow that is a statement of a object and reason it is a pure consolidating bill for this question the correct answer will be option number c that is both a and b transfer of property act 1882 and registration act 1908 which of the following statement is true in a given question they ask you given which statement is the true the first is contract equal to agreement plus enforceability at law all agreement enforceable by a law is called a contract in other word only those agreement become a contract which is a enforceable by a law or which arises a legal obligation thus there are two essential of a contract that is a agreement and second one is enforceability by a law some agreement may be enforceable by a law while other may not second option is agreement equal to offer plus acceptance if you look at the agreement formula then agreement equal to offer plus acceptance consolidation at adam the party to the agreement must have a agreed upon the subject matter of the agreement in the same sense and at the same time and last op- third option is both and last option is none of the above that means the correct answer will be option number a that is contract equal to agreement plus enforceability at law negotiable instrument act came into force in year here they ask you about the negotiable instrument act and when it came into the force for this the options are given that is 1861 second option is 1881 third option is 1871 and last option is 1981 Section 13 of the Act define the term negotiable instrument. Please remember the section that is 13. Okay, as a promissory note, bills of a exchange, or either the payable either to order or a barrio. A promissory note, bills of a exchange or a check is a payable to the order which is expressed to be payable or which is expressed to be payable to a particular person. and does not contain a word prohibiting transfer or indicating the intention that it shall not be transferable the correct answer for this question is option number b negotiable instrument act came into force in the year 1881 the next question here is barrier check are also known as which type of a check 
In a given question, they ask you about the barrier check. Now here, what is barrier check? Barrier check can be used to be payable as a cash or a barrier with the specific name. The barrier check does not have a word barrier on the check. The check is a payable over the counter to, to the barrier or the presenter of the check by the drawy bank. The barrier check can be transferred to the another person. Barrier check is also known as carrier check. Barrier check are usually used for a cash transaction and are a withdraw by the individual carrying a check and presenting it to the bank. This barrier check does not require the account holder to sign at the back part of the check. For this, the options given are cross check, second option is general, third option is special and last option is open. The correct answer here is option number D. That is barrier check are also known as open check or a carrier check. The next question here is liability on the instrument may be discharged by. For this the options given are cancellation, second option is release, third option is payment and last option is any one of the above method. The provisions relating to the liability of a party to the negotiable instrument are under the section of 30 to 32 and 35 to 42 of the Negotiable Instrument Act 1881. Now, if we, saw the if we see the discharge of a party from the liability, then the liability of a party to the negotiable instrument may be discharged or terminated in, in the following way. The first one is, by a payment in a due courses of a amount due. Second will be by the holder discharging or releasing the maker, acceptor or endorser. Third is by cancellation of party name by the holder. Fourth is by operation of a law. Fifth one will be by the holder allowing the drawee more than 48 hours of accepting the bill. Sixth one will be by taking qualified acceptance, all the previous party are discharged and last one will be by non-presentment of the check for a payment within the reasonable time of its issue if the bank fail, the drawer is discharged. Okay, so this is the explanation for this question. Understanding the question is a one of the most important part in the exam because if you are understanding the question, then only you will be able to answer the question. So here the answer for this question will be option number D. That is any one of the above method. The next question here is a check shall be deemed to be crossed specially. For this the options given are on addition of the name of the banker. Second option is drawing two line parallel. Third option is any of the A or a B. And the last option is none of the A or a B. So here according to section 124, please remember the section again. According to section 124 of a negotiable instrument act for the check to be deemed to have a cross, the banker name had to be added across the face of the check in case of a special crossing. A check must not be crossed by a drawing to a parallel line. According to explanation, this cannot be the answer because in explanation, just now I said check must not be crossed. Right? So the answer for this question will be option number A, that is, on addition of the name of the banker. The next question here is future of negotiable instrument are. In a given question, they ask you about the future of negotiable instrument act. For this, the options given are written and signed. Second option is recovery. Third option is freely transferable. And last option is all of the above. If you look at the future of a negotiable instrument, then there will be, first one will be some of the common feature of the negotiable instrument are, it is always the written document. Please remember this. The negotiable instrument is always the written document. Second is, it is a payable to the barrio. Then it is a transfer just by the delivery. And it is a payable to the order. Then it is a transfer by the delivery and endorsement. Third will be, the person who holds a negotiable document can sue a base on this document. Okay. 
Fourth one will be there is no consideration mentioned in the instrument. It is a presume already that it has been drawn for the valuable consideration. Next will be it work just like a money and can be transferred from one person to the another. That means it is a freely transferable. And last one will be for a debt it is a considered one of the simplest mode. Okay. So here the negotiable instrument is written and signed document. It can be recovered and it is a freely transferable. That means the answer for this question will be option number D. That is all of the above. The next question here is an instrument is what by what as per the NI Act 1881. NI means Negotiable Instrument Act 1881. Okay. For this, the options given are discharge or cancellation. Second option is close or release. Third option is close or payment. And last option is none of the above. So as per the explaining section 4, again remember here the section that is section 4 of the Negotiable Instrument Act 1881. The promissory note is the instrument in a written sign by the instrument maker and contain a promise to pay a certain pay of money to a certain person or a barrier of the instrument. Party to promissory note maker, the one who make the promissory note or who promise to pay to the maker. Here for this question, the correct answer is option number A that is an instrument is discharged by cancellation as per the Negotiable Instrument Act 1881. Check can be of how many types and crossing of a check can be of how many types. For this the options given are 3 and 2, 2, 2, third option is 2, 3 and last option is 3, 3. Now what is a check? Check is a document who can issue to the, you can issue that document to the bank, directing it to the pay a specific sum mentioned in a digit as well as in a word to the person whose name is on that check. Check is also called a negotiable instrument. In a banking term, a negotiable instrument is the document that promises it's a barrier a payment of the specific amount either on furnishing the document to the banker or by a given date. So here check can be of a two type and the crossing of a check can be of a two type. That means the answer here is option number B. Here the next question is given which of the promissory note has been given in a section what? For this, the options given are scope and section 2. Second option is definition and section 4. Third option is role and section 3. And last option is function and section 5. So here, section 4 of the letter act define the promissory note. A promissory note is an instrument in a written containing an unconditional undertaking signed by the maker to pay a certain sum of money only to or the order of a certain person or to the barrier of the instrument. That means the correct answer is option number B. The definitions of promissory note has been given in section 4. The next question is holder in due course means any person and options given are drawing the instrument. Second option is whose for a consideration become the possession of promissory note. Third option is Name in the instrument to whom or to whom order the money is directed to pay. And last option is none of the above. Holder in due course means any person who for a consideration become the processor of the promissory note. Based of an exchange or a check. If a payable to the barrier or the payee or endorse it thereof is a payable to the order therefore the amount mentioned in it become the payable and without having a sufficient cause to believe that any defected existed in the title of the person from whom he derived his title. That means the answer here for this question will be option number B. 
Holder in due course means any person who for a consideration become the possession of a promissory note. Who may negotiate? So a negotiation is strategic discussion that resolve an issue in a way that both the party find a acceptable. In a negotiation, each party try to persuade to the other to agree with his or her point of view by negotiating all involved party try to avoid the arguing by agree to reach some of the compromises okay for this the options given are drawer second is pay third is all of the joint maker and last one is any of the a to c Negotiation involves some give and a take. It means one party will always come out on the top of negotiation. The order through must connect it even if the concession is a nominal. Here the correct answer for this question will be option number D. That is any of A to C. What is the minimum paid up share capital required for the appointment of independent director? Here in this question, they ask you how much share capital is required to appoint the independent director. Okay. For this, the options given are 10 crore. Second option is 5 crore. Third option is 50 crore. And fourth option is 1 crore. Now, to answer this question, you should first know what is paid up share capital. So here the paid up capital is a money that a company receives from selling the stock directly to the investor. The primary market is the only place where the paid up capital is received usually through the initial public offering. We are usually say that IPO that is initial public offering. Okay, please remember the short form. Funding for a paid up capital is arrived from a two sources, the par value of a stock and a excess capital. Now, what is independent director? An independent director is a member of a board of director who does not have a material or a precautionary relationship with the company or a related person except the sitting fees. So the minimum paid up share capital required for the appointment of independent director is 10 crore. Please remember this. Okay. That means the answer here will be option number A. The next question here is what is the minimum net profit required for the applicability of corporate social responsibility on the company. Corporate social responsibility is also called as CSR. Please remember this, the short form of social corporate, corporate social responsibility. Now, what is corporate social responsibility? Here, the CSR is a form of international private business self-regulation with the aim to contribute to the socialitical goal of the activist and charitable nature by engaging in or supporting the voluntary or ethical oriented practice. While once it was possible to describe the CSR is an internal organizational policy or a corporate ethics strategy that time has been passed as a various national and international law has been developed and a various organization have used their authority to push it beyond the individual or even the industry-wide initiative. For this, the options given are 100 crore, second option is 500 crore, third option is 10 crore and last option is 1000 crore. Minimum net profit required for the applicability of a corporate social responsibility will be the 500 crore. Okay. So that means the answer will be option number B. In which E form appointment of secretarial auditor is done? In this question, they ask you the appointment of a secretarial is done in which of the given E form. Now, what is secretarial audit? Secretarial audit is introduced in the Companies Act 2013. Okay, Companies Act 2013. 
it is a process to check the compliance made by the company under the corporate law and other law rules regulation it is a mechanism to monitor the compliance with the requirement to state a law and a processes the first option given here is mgt 14 mgt 14 was introduced in the companies act 2013 with the objective of filing certain resolution with the register of a company such a resolution must be filed after passing of the same at the meeting held by the board shareholder and a creditor of the company second option given is mgt 15 here the mgt 15 is a filing report on the annual general meeting is a required to file the proceed to section 121 clause 1 okay of the companies act 2013 and the rules 31 clause 2 of the companies rule 2014 third option given is mr1 e form mr1 is a file to proceed to section 196 okay here we are talking about the section 196 and 197 schedule Five of the Companies Act 2013, Rule Three of the Companies Regulation 2014, and last option given is MR2. Form MR2 is a required to file for making application to CG officer approval as per the provision of Companies Act 1956. Here we are talking about the Companies Act 1956. Okay. form mr1 was not required to be filed if form mr2 being a file whereas new provision of companies act 2013 does not specify clearly whether to file mr1 if the form mr2 is being filed the appointment of a secretarial auditor as per the rule 8 of a company rules 2014 the secretarial auditor is a required to appoint it by a means of resolution passed at the duty convenes the board meeting and a resolution of the appointment shall be filed with the register of a company within the 30 days okay how many days then the 30 days sometime you receive the question on days so please remember it is a 30 days okay in the e form mgt 14 that means the answer will be option number a that is mgt 14 which of the following section deal with the private placement of the shares in this question they ask you given which section deal with the private placement of the share to answer this question you have to know about the private placement here the private placement or a non public offering is a funding round of the securities which are sold not to the public offering but rather to the private offering mostly a small number of a chosen investor generally this investor include a friends family and a institutional investor for this the first option is section 48 Section 48 of a Companies Act 2013 provide for the variation of the shareholder right. Okay, what Section 43 says? Section 43 enable a company to issue the equity shares with a dif- differential right as the dividend voting right. Rule 4 of a company of the Companies Rule 2014 stated the conditions regarding the shares with the differential voting right. then is section 62 as per the provision of section 62 clause 1 of the company act 2013 where at the any time a company having a share capital process to increase its subscribed capital by the issue of further shares such a share shall, shall be offered to the person who at the date of a offer are a holder of equity shares of the company in the portion as nearly as circumstances admit to the paid up share capital on those share by sending a letter of offer and last one is section 42 section 42 of companies act 2013 offer or invitation for a subscription of a security on the private placement okay i know the sections are little bit confusing 
but please understand the section because this is a one of the most important topic under this unit because most of the time you receive the question on the section so please remember this section the answer here for this question will be option number d that is section 42 the next question here is what is the duration during which the approved name is available for the formation of the company. Here they ask you the duration, the times which is required to approve it. Name is available for the formation of the companies. And the duration is given. The options are 90 days, then is a 60 days, 30 days and 15 days. The formation and the incorporation of the company are very much similar to the birth of a woman like it also goes to the various stage of the formation of its body part during the warm stage. The various groundwork is carried out to bring a company into the existence. The answer for this question will be option number B. The duration during which the approval name is available for the formation of a company will be 60 days. In which e-form balance sheet and a profit and loss account is a file a company during the year. Okay. So here what is balance sheet? Balance sheet means the financial statement of any organization. And what is profit and loss account? Here the profit and loss account is also the statement which shows the profit or a loss of the company. Whether the company is facing the profit or a loss. Okay. Here the first option is AOC4. The form AOC4 is used by a company to file their annual financial statement for a register of a company that is ROC for submitting the Consolidating financial statement of a particular year to ROC. The company must use the AOC4. Okay. Second option is MGT7. As per the section 92 of Company Act 2013. Here we are talking about section 92 of Companies Act 2013. That every company shall prepare the annual return in the form of MGT7 containing the particular as they stood on the close of the financial year regarding its register of its principal business activity, particular of its holding, subsidiary and associated company. Third option given is MGT-14. I already explained you what is MGT-14. As per the Company Act 2013, it is a mandatory for a company to inform a MCA about a certain activity. Special resolution passed in the company shall file a MCA in the form of MGT-14 in which certified copy of such a resolution are to be attached. And last option is GNL-2. E-form GNL-2 is required to file pursuant to the Company Act 2013 and the Company Act 1956. The company file written a document with the register of a company by filing this e-file GNL2 and in case there is a no e-form prescribed for filing any document with the register then the company or a liquidator can file such a document through this e-form. Okay. Here I explain you all the options. So please understand the option then only you will be able to answer the question. The correct answer here is option number A that is AOC4. What is the time limit for filing the annual return of the company? Here they are asking you the time limit for filing the annual return of the company. Now here the annual return is a publicly available document prepared by the company every year with the information available as at the close of the financial year to be filed with the register company. It is not a financial document, rather it contains a general information about the company, its a member, activity of the company and the other useful information. For this, the options given are within the 15 days from the date of annual general meeting. Second option is within the 30 days from the date of annual general meeting. Third option is within the 60 days from the date of annual general meeting. And last option is within the 90 days from the date of annual general meeting. The correct answer here is option number C that is within the 60 days from the date of annual general meeting. 
the next question here is the legal definition of partnership is a given in which of the indian partnership act 1932 okay so here in this question they ask you the definition of a partnership is a given in which of the section of partnership act 1932 so here the partnership act means when the two or more people come together as a partner they can form a partnership form okay required two or more people one member cannot make a partnership okay this partnership form is governed by the rules and the regulation of indian partnership act 1932 the partnership is also governed by the indian contract act in the area where the partnership act 1932 is silent first option here is section 2 section 2 in the indian company act 1932 is defined this act unless there is anything pregnant in the subject or a context an act of a form means any act or omission by all the partner or any partner or a agent of the firm which give a rise to the right enforcement by or against the firm second option is section 3 section 3 is for the limited liability partnership to the body corporate limited liability partnership act 2008 second third option is section 4 Section 4 of Indian Partnership Act define the partnership as a partnership is a relationship between the person who have agreed to share the profit of the business carried on by all or any of them acting for all and last option is section 5 section 5 in the limited liability partnership act 2008 five partners any individual or a body corporate may be the partner in the limited liability partnership as per the explanation just now i given you the answer will be option number c that is section 4 the next question here is voluntary dissolution of partnership firm can be how many type okay here they are asking you about a voluntary dissolution voluntary dissolution of a partnership the partnership may be dissolved at any time upon the consent of all the partner the partner shall as soon as responsible practicable liquidated and wind up the affair of a partnership the proceed require receive in the connection with the liquidation and any other remaining asset of the partnership will be applied in a order to priority the payment of all the debt liability and the obligation of the partnership including all the expenses for the liquidation distribution to or for the benefit of a partner in the accordance with the positive balance in each partners income account distribute to or for the benefit of a partner in accordance with the positive balance in each partner account the first option here is 2 second option is 4 third option is 3 and last option is 5 the correct answer for this question will be option number b that is 4 the next question here is a partner can what and the existing firm only with the consent of all the partner as per the section 32 of partnership act 1932 section 32 of indian partnership act 1932 is a require requirement of the partner a partner may retire with the consent of all the other partner in accordance with the express agreement by the partner or where the partnership is at will will or by giving a notice in writing to all other partner of his intention to retire so options given are enter into second option is retire from third option is join from and last option is insolvent form a partner can retire from an existing firm only with the consent of all the partner as per the section 32 of partnership act 1932 that means the answer is option number b